Hello everyone and welcome back to another Stormworks Search and Destroy Weapons DLC video. Now in this video we are going to be building a radar tracked and aimed and fired gun here in Stormworks. Yes that is correct. Ever wondered how you could get a gun just to automatically fire on targets where the planes may be trying to attack you or helicopters or boats? Well, uh, in this video, we're going to show you exactly how you can go and build it. We're going to build a very basic example today where you can literally turn it on and it's going to track any target and go and shoot at it like it is doing right now for me. And it's absolutely destroying it. Now, this can be extremely useful, for example, with a new AI, especially if you're trying to defend your ship or something like that. And you just want your guns to automatically fire at any targets. So let's jump in the workbench and let's get started. All right, so to get started, the first thing we're going to need is some pivots. Now, pivots will allow us to obviously go and rotate the gun left and right and up and down. So for the purpose of this video, we're going to be using some velocity pivots. They work really well, especially with the new radar pieces. So we're going to add one down here. Now, you don't need the large one. You don't need the small one. It's completely up to you on which size you would prefer to use. We're going to add it in and let's add some supports on and let's build it up like this. Once we've got that built on, we can add two more velocity pivots. Now, it doesn't matter which direction you put them in because we can change that later on in the logic. Once we've got that on, we of course need our gun. So I'm going to be using the rotary auto cannon today because it, why not? It's fun and it's big and it shoots a lot of bullets. So let's go and add that in. So once we've got that in, I've added it upside down actually so I can put the drum mag underneath it. So we're gonna add the drum mag. Now we're going to use a medium size because it just fits and looks quite nice in our example here and let's put it underneath. Once we've got it underneath we need to of course connect our drum mag over to our gun. So we're going to grab a belt. So let's just go and use a simple corner belt here to connect these two together. Once we've got that in we can then go and use the gun. If you want to, you can actually add a little like an automatic reloading system here using some more logic and some connectors or if you just want to reload it manually, you can add some extra drums behind your behind it like I'm doing it right now and we can just reload it every single time it gets empty. Don't forget to click on it and make sure you set it to rotary auto cannon and also to some type of ammo that you want. Uh, I'm going to, just going to use Kinetic today because why not? Once we've got that in, we will need a radar. The radar of course is what's going to be automatically detecting our targets and telling our gun to shoot at it. So we're going to be using the Felix one. Remember, you can use any one you want. They all work exactly the same. They all have different ranges, so just be aware of that. Once we've done that, before we start working on any logic, we will need a battery because we don't have infinite electricity enabled. And the last thing we want to do is we want to click on our radar and change some settings. Now, the first thing you can change is the field of view for both horizontal and vertical. We're going to set it to max on both, which is 0.25. We're also going to change it to a static mode, meaning it's going to just detect what's in front of it. That's perfectly fine. You can add some additional logic to maybe do uh, tell it to go left and right and so on. Once again, up to you on how you want to build it. I like to do it for this basic example. Let's just keep it as static. So we now have an effective range of 1,111, which is not too bad for a small little gun like this. Once we've got that all done, the next thing we need to do is we need to start working on the logic. So for the logic for this build, the first thing you're going to need is some way of turning the radar on and off. So I'm just going to be using a simple key button that will allow me to turn it on and off as I desire. Now I'm going to set it to a default status on to start with, and then we're going to go and connect that up to the radar itself. The next thing we're going to do is make sure if you haven't done so already, make sure you merge this pivot with the entire body. So now you've got, you can see both pivots are working together there. Once you've done that, we can now start the actual proper logic for this build. Now it's up to you if you want to do normal logic or if you want to build a mic controller. I like to use mic controllers because it means you can get really nice and compact little lure blocks. So we're going to grab that. Now you can go and create your own one by clicking on the mic controller editor. I've got a blank one and I like using these. So I'm going to click on that, click on it now, click on edit and I can change the size. Let's start with a two by three and we can start adding more features as we go on. The first thing I'm going to do is add a composite node. Everything you get from the radar is all composite these days, which is really nice and easy, means you have much less logic to worry about. Along with that, we're going to need two outputs. Two number outputs are going to be for your pitch and your pivot. Okay, so that's going to control both the velocity pivots that we have, and we're going to add that in. Pitch and pivot. Make sure you reorder it here, and now you can go into the logic. Once we have that, we need to go and read the composite 
and we need to decrypt it into both number outputs. So we can go and do that now by going and finding the reads and we're going to get four of these numbers. Now we don't need all four of them, but I will speak about them in a few seconds. Now, the radar currently works where it will detect four targets, or I think, oh, actually more, I think up to eight targets. Now, we're only going to worry about the first target it ever detects, but if you want to, you could read more and more and more. It will read the first target and say, hey, I found something, and that will read on channel one on and off. It will then also give you the distance on channel one. It will give you the rotation angle on channel two for the number. It will then give you the pitch angle on channel three with number. And it will also give you the time since detected on channel four. Now we won't be using those two at the moment. We'll just be worrying about our pitch and pivot, but we'll come back to the distance a little bit later on. The next thing we want is of course, rotation is gonna to go to pivot and we're going to get pitch to pitch. Well now that's all we need. We'll add some more logic here in a few minutes. Let's go and update this and let's start connecting our logic up. I'm gonna start with my electricity to everything, both my pivots, my key switches, and also the gun and the radar. The composite is going to come from my radar into my controller and then from my controller it's going to go into the pivot and it's going to go into the pitch. Once we've got that we can actually go and test this. So let's go and spawn it in and let's go and see what happens. Now it should detect us in a few seconds and you can see it is detecting us. The only problem is it's going right instead of left which is not good. It's also going down instead of up. So we can either go and rotate these pivots or you can go into here into the logic and add two function blocks. I prefer using the function blocks because I'm going to add them here in a few seconds in any case. So I'm just going to go there, add it in, join it, add it in, join it. We're going to go and do negative X and negative X. Great. Spawn that in, confirm it, and let's go and see now if it will start following us around. Aha, look at that. It's following me. As I go further back, it should start going further up and so on. Very good. Okay. But it's quite slow, isn't it? Yeah, it's quite slow. That's not going to track any gun or any type of weapon or tank or plane or anything like that. So we need to speed it up. And that's where we're going to use the function blocks. You can come into the function blocks and times it by three or times it by four. Let's start by timesing it by three and see how responsive it is. Update again. Jump in that. And let's see how responsive this is going to be in terms of tracking us. Ooh, that went to us really quickly, didn't it? Look how quickly it's going to us. That's going to follow us really well. Okay, great. So now we have that. But how do we get it to fire when it detects a target? Well, we can go back onto our little block here, onto our controller. We're going to add a new node, which is going to be fire out. And that's going to go to our Gatling gun or to our rotary gun. On off, output. Now we're going to say, hey, if you detect a target, go and fire. That's quite easy. However, you probably want to wait a few seconds for your gun to get on targets before it starts firing. So we can use a capacitor for that. So we can go here, add a capacitor on and say, hey, you know what? I want you to wait a second and then I want you to go and fire. Nice and easy, very simple there. Spawn that in again, get the fire, add it to the gun, jump in again. It's gonna wait a second now until it starts firing at us. And there we go, <laughs> it's firing at us. And you can see it's following us. It's following us around here. Now we can make it faster by simply going and increasing that time. Now it's out of ammo, but it's still firing. So we want to add a little bit more logic to stop it firing while there's no ammo. So to do that, we're going to add another node on and we're going to say ammo, please. Ammo number inputs. And we're going to say, hey, you know what? If the ammo is, let's say zero, then you don't, you're not allowed to fire. Or you could do, if your ammo is, if you got some ammo, then you are allowed to fire. So we can take this we can add an add block or sorry, an and block, simple and block. And we can say, hey, listen, you need to have the fire trigger and you also need to have ammo before you're allowed to fire. If those either one of those two things are not true or false, then you have to go and not fire. OK, so let's go and test that one out now. Make sure to connect the ammo, of course. And let's go for that. So now it should fire at us like normal. But as soon as it stops firing or runs out of ammo, it should stop firing. You can see how it's firing at me. And there you go. It stopped shooting. Fantastic. But what happens if, uh, NJ, I put this on my ship and I have a boat at the back of my ship or like a life raft or something. And the gun just keeps on firing at the life raft because it's the closest target. Well, there's a couple different things you could do. 
you can actually add some little bit of logic in here to tell the system to s do not detect anything that's within, let's say, 50 meters or do not detect anything that's not within 100 meters. It's up to you. It is completely up to you. Now, to do that, we can use the distance, which is channel one on the radar. So we can grab a threshold gate and we can say, hey, you know, if the distance is, let's say, if the distance is between zero and 50, then you are not allowed to shoot this. Or maybe the distance has to be above 51 and between 9999. And then we can grab an and block again, add it in here, done. So fire trigger, wait one second, send it through. Do we have ammo? Yes, we do. That means we have two positives or two trues. Goes through and says, hey, what's the range? Is it above 151? Yes, it is. Okay, then go and shoot. Okay, so this should not shoot at us if we're within 51 meters, but that's fine. Actually, you know what? I don't want the gun to move. I want the gun to stay as it is. I only want it to move if it wants to shoot. So what we can do is add two switch boxes, add them in over here and then say, hey, listen, you know what? If you detect a target over 51, then you're only allowed to send this through. That's the only time you're allowed to send this through to go and move the actual gun. Go and add that in there. And you can see now only when it's on, which is when it's over 51 meters. Great. Let's go and update that. Spawn it in. And now it should only be moving once we are. Look, I'm going right in front of it. Nothing is happening. I'm going to put a little waypoint on here for you guys. And you'll notice as soon as I go past 50 meters, this should be tracking me and it should start firing at me. Oh, there we go. <laughs> and now you can see it's firing directly at me. So yeah, that's really cool. Now you can add a whole bunch more logic on here. You could do, you know, cycle targets, go shoot at the first target for five seconds, then move on to the second target, shoot for five seconds, move on to the third target, five, five seconds. It, it is completely up to you. Now you did see there was one issue is that when I spawned this in, could you see how the nose was just going down? Yeah, it just dropped all the way down there. Now you, that's fine. You can leave it like that. I personally like my, especially like an anti-air gun like this, I would like it to face up in the air. So to do that, there's a couple different ways you can do it. Uh, I would probably just use a tilt sensor is probably being the easiest. I'm just going to add a tilt sensor onto the gun. I can also go onto my little mic controller. So we're just going to add a new node here, and that's going to be for our actual tilt sensor. So tilt sensor, it's going to be a number and it's going to be input. Now, what we're going to do now is we're going to come in here and we're going to go and use a PID to go and measure what our tilt is and tell it to go to a certain set point. Okay, so we're gonna go and add that in. We're gonna say the variable is our tilt and we're also going to say a set point. Let's use a set point of, let's do 0 0.1 for example. Okay, so that when we don't have a target, then I want you to always be at 0 0.1. So we already know that when we have a target, we're already reading it. So we can use a not block. So we're gonna grab a not block and we're gonna say, hey, when you don't have a target, then I want you to turn this PID on. And also I want you to have a switch box and we're going to use the PID as the off. Well, actually, let's use it as the on. And we're going to say when you don't have a target, then we want to send this through over to the, let's do the pitch, which is over there. If it's not, then it's off and it gets it from the radar. Okay. So just another way of doing it here. Simply add this in for the settings for the PID, just do like 0 0.1 or 1. It should be pretty straightforward. Uh, you can obviously, let's spawn this and let's just go and see. Don't forget to connect the tilt, which I just did. Great. Spawn it in. And you can see it's going down, which is not what we want. So we just need to go and invert that PID. Let's go and double check it. Let's do a negative one on here. Great. There. The only issue is that this is always off at the moment because of this threshold gate here at the moment. So this is this is the currently the issue that we're having is it's not detecting a target and that's why this is not turning on here. So what we could do to bypass that is we can just get rid of this, get rid of this, put it back here and just add another switch box afterwards like so. And we're going to go and put that as the, well actually we don't even need another switch box. We can just use this one and put it over there. Great, cool. Uh, spawn that in. Let's go and check it now. It should go up. 
There we go. So now it's always sitting up at that position. It's always going to be searching the little arc or radius that it has. And uh, as soon as we get more than 50 meters, it should detect us and start firing at us instantaneously. And you can see there, firing, 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 firing. It's now gone and stopped firing because I didn't have a target. Now we could actually tell it that, hey, when you don't have a target anymore, reset yourself. And also when you don't have any ammo, reset yourself. But you can see I got out of its range now and uh, it's gone and reset itself. So guys, that's how you can set up an automatic firing weapon using radars. I think it's really cool. Now, yes, this is an absolutely perfect. I mean, it doesn't do lead detection. Uh, on the target so it won't lead it it will fire just directly on where it finds it so you could add additional math but that's going really quite advanced into trigger and a few other things there and we don't have the velocities of the of the guns just yet so there's a few things that we still need to work out this is a very basic method and a cool way of how you can go and get your weapons to fire automatically at the targets now let's go and do a little bit of playing around here so I'm going to keep this one and we're going to go and copy it and we're going to create another one. This time we're going to use the auto cannons because why not? So we're going to go and copy this entire thing. We're going to paste it down and instead of using a rotary gun, we're going to use one of the auto cannons here. So let's go and maybe we can add two. Let's add two on. That should be quite fun. So let's go and add, what should we use the large one? Yeah, let's use the large auto cannon, which is over here. So we'll add that on, why not? And let's go and stick it in over there. I guess we could put two. <laughs> let's keep it with one. Let's let's be sensible. Let's be somewhat sensible here with one. Okay, and let's add that in over there and maybe just something to make this look half decent. And there we go. Okay, I've also got it at the wrong way. So let me just put that on again. There we go. That should be in perfect position now. We can add, let's add some extensions onto this gun and make it nice quite a long call. Uh, fire. Well, we just need to fire it like that. We need to, of course, give it some ammo. So let's give it some heavy kinetic ammo. And that is as simple as it gets. Don't forget electricity, of course. I'm going to do that. Okay, cool. So now we've got all that. And of course, our weapons are ready to go. Just like that. Let's go and spawn something in. Oh, so you can see it's not leading it perfectly, but look at that. That one's doing great, isn't it? Round after round after round after round into that. That thing is going to overheat too. <laughs> By the way, your guns overheat and they stop working. <laughs> Just as an FYI. Did it overheat? No, it didn't. Just ran out of ammo. <laughs> so it put tons of rounds down range. So guys, um automatically firing weapons using radar simple as that there's not much to it uh hopefully you have enjoyed this and this has been somewhat useful for you guys i will be updating my uh sea whiz of felix that i've created i think about two and a half three years ago i need to update that and get it on the workshop for you guys uh, i will leave a link to if i've done that otherwise just go and have a look at my workshop and check it out um let me know in the comments what you think of this and if you want to check it out or see any more videos kind of like this uh, let me know in the comments below if you enjoyed it smash the like button hit the subscribe button if you haven't already uh, and think about clicking the little bell icon to be notified as soon as my content gets released and until the next one we will see you then